Hey, top in your line is math and history, and we are going to take a look at the national savings of a government in economics. So what we're going to do is, since sometimes the government has an involvement with how the economics is used and how it's controlled in that nation, we're going to take a look at how does the tax is going to affect the government spending and also what happens if we increase it or decrease it. So there are two things that we are going to learn today. We are going to take a look at the, the private savings and we're also going to look at the public savings. So, what we mean by private and public is... So, picture this. Picture a nation. That nation should have a government, infrastructure, places to live, and families that work in that nation. So, we can understand that private savings is going to talk about the government. So, how much money the government saves and does not have spending. So basically, this focuses on the government. But another thing that counts as a whole nation to be unified, and a nation also has houses and infrastructure owned by the public. So in this case, I know, this is going to be the people, and basically savings like houses and bank accounts and stuff like that. So, to understand the national savings, they are going to be the sum of both of them. So, we're going to say that national savings is going to be private savings plus the public savings to equal what the national savings are. So, when we talk about this and that, we talk a lot about the income of that, whatever it is, the taxes, and the consumption. So there are going to be three letters. Y, T, and C. Y is going to equal GDP for the government or income. The T is going to represent the amount of taxes that is being put on the government or on the public or the citizens. And C is going to be consumption. Sometimes we have to eat things to survive, like tomatoes and pizzas and blah, blah, blah. So, here's the formula for the private savings, usually for the government. So, the formula is going to be the GDP or income, or Y, subtract that by T, subtract that by C. And also, for the public, they don't have to worry about GDP because it's the government's job to calculate that since the government runs the entire country. Therefore, about the public, they only have to worry about the taxes that are put on them by the government. And we also have to worry about the consumption and things that we eat, like apples and oranges and tomatoes and pizzas and milkshakes and blah, blah, blah. So, <laughs> national gain or national debt or no, national savings I mean is actually going to be the sum of the two. So what we just understood right there is the difference between private and public savings and how they contribute to the country's national savings. But not only that, why is tax in there? Why do we have to talk about tax and why does it have to be an economic? Well, if we take a look at th that case scenario, sometimes the government acts like humans because it's run by humans. Therefore, the amount the, go the amount the government taxes on us might depend on how much they're spending on the government spendings and also how they control the economy. So we are going to understand the comparison between the taxes and the savings they have. So, here's two scenarios. If the government spends more on things, infrastructure, buildings, possibly trade, 
possibly buying things from other nations, then what's going to happen is we're going to say that the spending is greater than the taxes put on the American citizens, for example. What that's going to do is it's going to create a word called a defect. And what that means is the nation is spending a lot more money than it can hold in terms of taxes only. So if you're the government and you receive all your taxes from your citizens, a defect would happen when the government is spending more money than the amount of taxes. Therefore, you can get into a lot of debt. And that is really, really bad. But if we say that if we spend less, then, then we could also say, if the taxes were greater than the savings, we're going to have a surplus. Not to mention from Unit 1 when we talked about supply and demand, the government is not a U.S. firm. But we say surplus, so economics people or economists or expert people that do in that field, understand that the government is trying to save money by spending the less amount of money they have than taxes. So they receive more taxes, but spend less than the taxes amount. Therefore, the government saves more money. But wait, if there are some cases where the government can get too powerful, how does this happen? Well, if you talk about the U.S. financial stuff with the government, we are going to say that the leg legislative branch is going to decide how much money the entire government can spend. What they can do is put a limit on how much it spends and the U.S. government cannot go over that. If they do, then they're in a lot of trouble. So we've understood how to do and understand national savings, what public savings are, and what private savings are. I hope this video has helped you understand national savings. Thank you for watching Cal Ping Alliance for Math Industry. Like and subscribe.